a magnetic field. So we, we are now getting into the realms of uh, the talk, that was kind of an introduction, because I, I want to talk about how energy can be imprinted. Uh, someone mentioned the, the paper out there about uh, the uh, Russian uh, article about uh, biophysical properties of water imprinted with electromagnetic fields. Um, I'm going to go one step further in this particular talk, but first I want to just mention the different kinds of energy fields which have been used to imprint or activate or poten potentialize uh, water. And classic electromagnetic fields are actually now well established. Even in the bioelectromagnetics community, um, they have been studying electromagnetic field interactions with biological systems. And then some Russian scientists, I think, originally said, well, never mind the biological system, let's just look at the water and treat the water with an electromagnetic field and then add it to the biological system. And sure enough, water does have a memory, and in this case it, it can last for days, maybe weeks, but certainly days. And that's an anomaly right there. When you turn off the source of an electromagnetic field, any structuring of the water should dissolve and dissipate. And uh, so, you know, what's going on? What's the mechanism? I will talk about that a a at, the, at the end. But there are now studies that show other portions of the electromagnetic spectrum, including visible light, uh, also have similar effects. Acoustic energy, uh, potential energy fields, which I'll talk about in a minute, and even consciousness are all now known to affect water. In fact, last year I talked about my research with consciousness, for those who weren't here, and uh, how water can store conscious intention and then be transferred to a biological system. Uh, so I'm not going to talk about that again, but just FYI. Um, okay, so here are some of the actual physical measurements that have been uh, done on energized water, what, what, whatever form of energy was used to uh, imprint the water. I mean, everything from standard pH and solubility measurements to more esoteric measurements of uh, electrical properties and zeta potentials and oxygen and surface tension. And, um, and the last two in the bottom are particular of interest because this is what I have used and I'm going to report about in this particular talk, the use of various forms of spectroscopy to measure the excited state of the solvent molecules, the water itself, or in the case of ultraviolet, it's actually measuring the oxygen dissolved in the water. Um, now there is a distinction between a vibrational transition and an electronic transition, but these various forms of spectroscopy do measure uh, these uh, transitions and are well known in both in the case of homeopathic remedies and energized water to show differences between treated and untreated. Um, I'm not really going to talk about the biology in this particular talk, but there are lots of biological endpoints which have been measured with energized water, whether it is a homeopathic remedy or whether it is an electromagnetic field or whether it's consciousness. And I guess we talked about that earlier in the conference in regard to, uh, to Bill Bankston's work with conscious, his, his energies, quote, to uh, be transferred to water. And I think this is an important area because, as Bob John was talking about uh, in the first panel, this is where we can generate products. This is where we can take our subtle energies and our esoteric anomalies and actually transfer information to water and have a stable preparation which can produce biological effects and actually make a product. Okay, so the, um, and now I want to get into the meat of what I'm talking about today. And what I want to talk about is um, non-classical forms of electromagnetic fields and their role in imprinting water. Now the first person to really do this was Cyril Smith, who was a, a professor of electrical engineering in England. And um, he was quite interested in A fields. Now, classic electromagnetic fields are described in terms of the electric component, the magnetic component, which are both force fields. You know, you really have to, you know, they, they, they produce a force and they, they have a macroscopic effect on matter, which is well known. But it, in the original mathematical equations, they, they realized that they needed to introduce another term, the magnetic vector potential or the A field, 
to really accurately describe the interaction of electromagnetic fields with matter. Now, A fields were thought uh, uh, to be a mathematical construct for many, many years, but it was only relatively recently where they actually uh, measured a macroscopic effect of A fields and were able to show that an A field does affect the spin of an electron. Okay, so uh, Cyril Smith's work aside, we're going to go into my work where I actually used ultraviolet spectroscopy, measure energized water. Uh, in this case, the, uh, the energy was generated uh, from a uh, particular uh, setup, which I will talk in a minute, and I'm going to um, show that uh, right now. Well, okay, so. Uh, this is an example of, of the kind of effect with, that you see with homeopathy, uh, where the ultraviolet spectra of the control is the upper graph. And in this case, there was a, a decrease in uh, the spectra. Depending on the kind of energized water you get, you get a different uh, phenomena at different uh, regions of the spectra between 200 and 240 nanometers. So this is some previous work. Um, in the present work, um, what I did was I wanted to compare the classical electromagnetic fields with the non-classical, in this case, a force-free field. So we have an experimental setup which will allow us to cancel all the electric and magnetic force fields uh, using a, uh, a bifilar coil in contrast to a solenoid coil. Okay, And the experimental setup is uh, based on uh, uh, of a bifilar coil is based on the concept where you have equal and opposing currents which cancel the magnetic and electric force fields associated with electromagnetic energy. This concept has been used by others, not in terms of information in printing and water, but has been used to generate um, uh, <laughs> anti-gravity and um, it, it's this is like another whole topic, but uh, the, these kinds of um, um, uh, anti-parallel configurations uh, produce effects where you can actually measure the, uh, the weight of an object and it decreases. So these are some references. So okay, in the present experimental uh, design, I have two kinds of coils, uh, a classic solenoid coil where the current runs parallel. Now because the current input is 43 kilohertz, uh, we have a time varying uh, signal going in. And, as, and the two different coils uh, were matched uh, because they have a different impedance and different electrical properties so that the total power was the same in both coils. Uh, the, co the coil on the right is the bifilar coil where the current goes in opposite directions. And um, you know, in, on the left, again, we go down to the, the magnetic field uh, present uh, in a class classic uh, coil like this. You have a magnetic field, which the B, an E field, and the A field that I talked about. In the uh, bifilar winding, the B field and the A field were calculated in this particular case by Bill Tiller. This was a, a collaboration that we did together several years ago. And you can see the magnitude of, of, the, uh, of the A field and the B field are negligible. When you get down to minus 13 Tesla, it's basically uh, a negligible field. So we're, what we're doing here is we're creating an environment where there is no uh, force fields present and there's no magnetic vector potential either. And you put the sample of water inside for an hour and a half, you measure the ultraviolet spectroscopy immediately after, and these are the kind of results you get. On the upper six separate experiments, the upper graph represents the experiments with the classical solenoid coil. And you can see that the, the values vary, plus or minus 0.05 around the zero, uh, if you can find the zero up, 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 up there. And here, the zero is here. And in the case of the uh, bifilar coil, you always produce a negative uh, change in the absorption spectra. Uh, that suggests that there's less oxygen. Uh, and that might be due to uh, change in the oxygen itself. It might be due to the uh, ability of this, uh, the structuring of the water to protect the oxygen so that it's more entrapped within the structuring so that 
you can't measure uh, 